All children are born innocent, but sometimes their circumstances bring out the worst in them. What happens when circumstances push children to commit the unimaginable? Join us as we delve into the story of the cold-blooded murder of a two-year-old child named David Galarraga. On a fateful Monday, March 14, 2011, something horrific happens in the confines of a Jacksonville, Florida home. Two-year-old David Galarraga finds himself entrusted to the care of his 12-year-old half-brother, Christian Fernandez. Little does David know that his brother, who should have been his protector, would change both of their lives forever. While their mother was gone, Christian does the unimaginable. In a recent altercation, Christian had fractured David's leg while wrestling. Their mother, Bianella Susana, knowing this, leaves all of her children with Christian, who had been violent with David once before. Christian, in the absence of his mother, becomes abusive with his brother and pushes them into a wooden shelf, not once, but twice. Christian soon understands what he has done as David was breathing, but he had stopped moving and his eyes were still and wide open and he was bleeding from his face. When his mother comes back, Christian takes her to see David who was lying unconscious. Bianella, on the other hand, is quite calm about the whole situation and decides to wipe her baby's clothes and face and put ice on his head, which clearly has a bulging bump. Even though David is unconscious and showed no signs of movement, Bianella does not call 911 for help and assistance, nor does she rush him to a hospital like a normal mother would have. During the agonizing hours that follow, Bianella's priorities take an eerie detour as she scrolls through the internet. However, her search history will shock you. While her child is unconscious in the same room as her, she decides to do some online banking and watches YouTube videos, something that a stable person wouldn't have done. She missed the boat and wasted her precious time that could have saved her child, reading stories of celebrities. She also searches for phrases like when someone gets knocked out and coma, and also visited a specific website about concussions multiple times. Bianella thinks that this is just a concussion and that her baby will wake up after a while, while she waits a whole four hours for him to wake up and finally decides to take him to the hospital when he hasn't. Her heart must have been cold as ice, as nothing makes her bolt in action for her child's well-being. She finally decides to take David to a nearby hospital, nearly four hours after she had found her unconscious child. Unfortunately, David meets his death after two days of fighting for his life on life support. He had suffered a plethora of injuries, which included subdural hemorrhage, subdural hematoma, bruising on his left eye, and bruising on the bridge of his nose. On the night of the incident, Christian was interrogated at Jacksonville Sheriff's Office by Detective Nichelle Solik, where he agreed to have caused harm to his brother, although reluctant throughout the session. During the interrogation, Christian is seen using a doll provided by Detective Scholig to show how he had broken David's leg in 2011. Okay. You, so you don't want to turn to? I think he's doing it. Okay. Phase two, but maybe he's going to be three for soon. Um, so tonight you were home. Well, you told me, you said before, um, in January, he, he got hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And he had broken his leg, little David. Mm -hmm. The detective asked, did you hear a snap? To which he replied, well, sort of. He started crying, so I stopped. There were instances where Christian would take long pauses and both Sholig and Christian would just look at each other. At first, Christian said that David was carrying books on his head which caused him to fall and hit his head. However, Christian, on further interrogation, said that he had pushed his brother twice into a bookshelf and that he did feel bad about what had happened that night. He repeatedly said that he knew what he had done. Me and him. Just y'all too? Mm -hmm. Where was your mom at? I think you, she was taking my brother to school. Okay. So, okay. So what happened? So when you did that, was, was it on her? However, the interrogation was shady. The 12-year-old child was questioned without a guardian or a legal representative, something that law enforcement must make sure before questioning a minor. He was read his Miranda rights, something a 12-year-old child would know nothing about. He was continuously questioned for an hour and was asked to show the detective by using a doll how he had injured his brother. Christian used the doll to show he had broken his brother's leg by bending David's leg towards his back. And when the detective asked him where he found such a technique, he said that he had found that in a book where Indians could do it, to which the detective asked if he could do it too, to which Christian answered that he couldn't. Yet, he used such a technique with his brother. This means that the children often knew what they were doing. However, they keep doing it even though they know that it would cause harm to another person. However, they don't think twice of the consequences that ensue. The tactics that are usually used on adult offenders were used on Christian as well. To get information out of Christian, the investigator can be seen touching the back of his clothes as if she had seen blood on it. 
She also asks him about the clothes that he had worn that night as they must have been bloodied as Christian had earlier confessed to have carried David who was bleeding from his face on his shoulders. After a while, the detective can be seen going out for 12 minutes. You can see Christian searching for something on the back of his shirt, most probably making sure there was no blood on it. Like, almost like eight minutes after I, I, I put him on the bed. Okay. And what phone did you call her from? From my phone. Where's that phone? In my, in our house. What kind of phone is it? It's a uh, metal piece, yes. Is it black? No, it's blue. It's blue? Okay. Well, it is black, but I put a cover that's blue. Oh, okay. And is it in your room? Mm-hmm. Christian was asked why he had pushed David twice, to which he answered, I don't know. I don't even know why I pushed him. He also states later that he was angry as his stepdad had done the same thing to him as Christian had done to David. Years of pent-up frustration was taken out on David that night. His bitter thoughts had gotten the best of him. Christian was initially arrested for aggravated child abuse. However, David's death turned the tables and he was indicted for first-degree murder of the child. All this abuse is due to Christian's dark past. He was a survivor of domestic violence as well as sexual abuse, which traumatized his entire childhood. Bianella had Christian when she was just 12 years old. His father, Jose Antonio Fernandez, was 20 at the time. However, he never played much of a role in his upbringing and completely vanished from his life when he got the chance. There was a time when Christian and Bianella, 14 at that time, were removed from her mother's custody and were put into foster care as police had found two-year-old Christian dirty and naked and walking around by himself outside a Florida motel, while their grandmother was intoxicated on drugs in one of the motel rooms. Nothing was ever the same for Christian after that night. Christian was only seven years old when Bianella married Luis Galarraga Blanco and had three kids with him, David being the youngest. One day, Christian's school authorities had noticed him with a black eye and decided to report it to the authorities, as Christian had told them that his stepfather had punched him in the eye. Luis was asked to come to the school meeting for questioning. However, he didn't show up, and the police decided to bring him in. However, something horrifying awaited the officers. They never imagined that a small girl covered in blood would open the door for them. Luis was found dead in the house. He had shot himself in the head, and that too in front of the kids. The kids were drenched in blood and were frightened and clearly traumatized by what they had seen. Luis used to beat and punch Christian and even went to the lengths of sexually abusing him. And this became clear when Christian's medical reports showed years of sexual abuse inflicted upon his body. Even his cousin had reportedly sexually abused him, other than Luis. Forensic psychiatrists exclaimed that Christian was also emotionally underdeveloped. Christian had been forced to suppress his emotions for a very long time. He had learned to bottle up his emotions, as it was evident in an interview with a counselor where Christian says he got stuck up feelings and get over it. I want you to read that top line for me. You have the following rights under the United States Constitution. Okay. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. Do you understand that, Christian? Anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand that, Christian? You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you and to have the lawyer with you during any questioning. Do you understand? Christian's request to be tried as a juvenile was denied by the court initially. However, his case blew up like wildfire. Many activists advocated for his rights as a minor and to consider his past as a survivor of sexual abuse. In February 2013, Christian Fernandez pleaded guilty as a juvenile to manslaughter and aggravated battery. He was eligible to be released by the Department of Juvenile Justice in 2018 on his 19th birthday. His mother, Bianella, also received a suspended sentence of 10 years with probation and avoided additional incarceration, although the court had earlier decided to make her go through a separate trial for aggravated manslaughter for David's untimely demise. The idea that kids are killing other kids makes me feel horrified, but not as horrified as when I found out about the daughter who killed her mom by stabbing her 200 times. Click that video right here.